Hello again from Metro Manila, the Philippines, Southeastern Asia. Here is a brief educational video today on March the 31st, 2019. Exactly 70 years have come to pass since an important political event in Canada, one of my three homelands where I lived as an immigrant from 1987 to 1993, of course, holidays in Finland excluded. <coughs> Newfoundland or Newfoundland, uh, to pronounce it more phonetically, joined Canada as its 10th and youngest province. Newfoundland had remained outside the Canadian Confederation, which was originally a self-governing um, political entity of four provinces um, under the British Empire's sovereignty. But then by the uh, statutes of Westminster in 1926 and 1931 was declared independent uh, by the British government uh, alongside other so-called old dominions, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. Even though Newfoundland's neighboring <coughs> colonies joined one by one already in 18 or the other Atlantic, what are now called the Atlantic provinces of Eastern Canada joined. <coughs> Nova Scotia and New Brunswick joined already in 1867 and uh, Prince Edward Island joined in 1873. Newfoundland stubbornly remained a separate um, <clears throat> colony of the British crown, had its uh, self-government, so-called responsible government. But then in the early 1930s, in the throes of the Great Depression, the government went bankrupt uh, and uh, accepted a rule by uh, a commission representing the British crown. But after the Second World War, enough Canadian politicians and enough Newfoundland politicians and ordinary citizens, <coughs> especially in Newfoundland itself, felt that it was time to complete, as it were, the Confederation. Uh, well, one purpose may have been a logistical one, that since um, transatlantic flights often had that stop over in Gander, Newfoundland, um, it would have been inconvenient if uh, that stopover would still have been in Britain, while the next stop, whether in Montreal or Toronto, usually would already have been <clears throat> in Canada. And uh, if I remember correctly from one of my Canadian history books, for example, this kind of uh, promise was made um, to Newfoundland because the issue was decided by a referendum, a direct vote of the eligible voters, where the confederation joining option received a narrow majority. Uh, Joseph Smallwood was one of the most instrumental Newfoundland uh, journalists and politicians pushing for uh, the provinces or the colonies union with Canada. Um, Newfoundland will be uh, linked to a strong British nation. Newfoundland will go ahead with Canada. So economic prosperity was promised. Newfoundland remains uh, 70 years after joining Canada, unfortunately one of Canada's uh, poorest provinces, although the so-called transfer payments or equalization payments uh, have reduced alongside the economic uh, growth and the social programs and so forth, have reduced uh, the initially huge income gaps between Newfoundland and especially Ontario and Quebec. So let's look at the Wikipedia article now. According to Wikipedia, a website on the Canadian uh, provinces, 
worldpopulationreview.com slash Canadian dash provinces slash Newfoundland and Labrador <clears throat> currently have about 526,000 people. This is more than Prince Edward Island's population, only 153,000. I'm rounding them off to the nearest 1,000, but significantly less than Nova Scotia's population of 958,000 <clears> and New Brunswick's population of 761,000 let alone the other Canadian provinces' populations, Saskatchewan, 1,171,000, Manitoba, 1,349,000, Alberta, 4,334,000, British Columbia, 4,863,000, Quebec, 8,455,000, and then Ontario, <clears throat> in a class of its own with 14 million 374,000 people. Then, of course, are the three territories. Northwest Territory having some 45,000 people, Yukon some 39,000 people, and then Nunavut having some 38,000 people. So about 92% of the province's population, so it's a very unequally <coughs> distributed uh, population lives on the island of Newfoundland, where is also located uh, St. John's, which is the province's capital. And that includes almost 40%, so almost two-fifths of the uh, province's population. <clears throat> but then it, there's the Labrador Peninsula, which forms uh, the province's um, northern part, and is mostly uh, likely or likely inhabited or uninhabited. Um, in December 2001, the Canadian Constitution was amended or changed, and therefore the province's official name <clears throat> became Newfoundland and Labrador. <coughs> So it's Canada's easternmost province and is located at North America's northeastern corner. The Strait of Belle Ile, or Beautiful Island, separates the province into two geographical divisions, Labrador and Newfoundland. The province also includes over 7,000 small islands. <coughs> Newfoundland is roughly triangular. Each side is about 400 kilometers long, and its area is 108,860 square kilometers. Labrador is irregularly shaped. Uh, the western part of its border with Quebec is the drainage divide of the Labrador Peninsula. Most of Labrador's southern boundary with Quebec follows the 52nd parallel of latitude that is 52nd parallel to the north of the equator. <coughs> Labrador's extreme northern tip at 60 degrees and 22 minutes north shares a short border with Nunavut. Labrador's area is 294,330 square kilometers. Labrador is the easternmost part of the Canadian Shield, a vast area of ancient metamorphic rock comprising much of northeastern North America. <clears throat> the north-south extent of the province, from 46 degrees and 36 minutes north to 60 minutes, 22 degrees <clears throat> north, uh, or northern latitude, prevalent westerly winds, cold ocean currents, and local factors such as mountains and coastline combine to create uh, the province's various climates. Most of Newfoundland has a humid continental climate, uh, more specifically the cool summer subtype, um, of course, except for the uh, coastlines. This is ironical because Newfoundland, after all, is surrounded by the North Atlantic. Southern Labrador has a subarctic climate, and Northern Labrador has a polar tundra climate. <clears throat> <coughs> uh, 
even though uh, Newfoundland has, for the most part, a cool summer subtype of a humid continental climate, it is greatly influenced by the surrounding Atlantic Ocean. No part of the island is more than 100 kilometers from the ocean. Monthly average temperatures, rainfall and snowfall for four places are shown in the attached graphs. St. John's <clears throat> represents the east coast, Gander the interior of the island, Corner Brook the island's western coast, and Wabush uh, the uh, interior of Labrador. <clears throat> so in St. John's, the average temperature, high temperature for July is 20 degrees Celsius. The average low temperature is 11 degrees Celsius. And here are the figures for <clears throat> several other places. Grand Falls, Windsor, 23 and 11. Gander, 21 and 11. Corner Brook, 22 and 13. Stephenville, 20 and 12. Fogo Island, 19 and 10, Labrador City 19 and 8, <coughs> Happy Valley Goose Bay 21 and 10, and then 9 or Nane, spelled N I N A I N, 15 and 5. In January, <coughs> those locations average high and low temperatures uh, on the Celsius uh, scale are the following St. John's minus 1 and minus 9. Grand Falls, Windsor, minus 2 and minus 12. Gander, minus 3 and minus 12. Corner Brook, minus 3 and minus 10. Stephen Will, minus 2 and minus 9. Fogo Island, <clears throat> minus 3 and minus 9. Labrador City, minus 16 and minus 27. Happy Valley Goose Bay, minus 12 and minus 22. <clears throat> and Nain or 9, minus 14 and minus 23. So <clears throat> let's look briefly at um, Newfoundland's history. Around the year 1000, there was a Norse Viking colony there, which has been reconstructed um, at Lawns or Meadows. <clears throat> Around the year 1001, more specifically, the sagas are these partly fictional and partly true stories uh, written by those ancient Vikings and ancestors of today's, uh, most in this case, mostly Norwegians and Icelanders. But <clears throat> in a broader sense, of course, <coughs> sorry, of today's Swedes and Danes as well. Uh, claim that uh, Leif Eriksson, uh, whose uh, father was called Erik the Red, uh, landed in three places to the west. The first two being Helluland, possibly Baffin Island, and Markland, possibly Labrador. Leif's or Leif's third landing was at a place he called Vinland, and possibly Newfoundland. And indeed, in Lance or Meadows, or uh, Bay of Meadows. Newfoundland, a Norse <coughs> settlement's archaeological evidence uh, was found and it was declared a World Heritage Site by the United Nations Economic and Social Council in 1978. There are several other unconfirmed accounts of European discovery and exploration. One tale by men from the Channel Islands being blown off course in the late 15th century into a strange land that was filled with fish. And another from Portuguese maps that depict the Terra do Bacalhau, or land of codfish, west <clears throat> of the Azores. The earliest, however, is the voyage of Saint Brendan, an Irish monk's fantastical account. He supposedly made a seed voyage in the early 6th century. While the story itself became a part of myth and legend, <clears throat> some historians still believe that it is based on true events. What we do know that in 1496, Mr. Giovanni Caboto or John Cabot, in his name's anglicized form, <clears throat> obtained a charter from the English King Henry VII to sail to all parts, countries and seas of the East, the West and of the North <clears throat> under our banner and ensign and to set up our banner on any new found land. No wonder that uh, this 
last uh, hyphenated word, compound word, became <clears throat> the colony's name and the current province's unofficial name. And on June the 24th, 1497, <clears throat> of course, according to the old Julian calendar, theoretically it would um, translate into uh, July the 2nd under the Gregorian calendar, except that the Gregorian calendar was only adopted around <clears throat> the year 1581. <clears throat> he landed in Cape Bonavista. Historians still disagree on where, whether Cabot landed in Nova Scotia in 1497 or in Newfoundland or possibly Maine if he landed at all. But both the Canadian and the British governments recognized Bonavista as <clears throat> Cabot's official landing place. In 1499 and 1500, Portuguese mariners Joao Fernandes Labrador, from whose last name Labrador comes, and Peru de Barcelos explored and mapped the coast, the former's name appearing as Labrador on the period's topographical maps. <clears throat> Based on the Treaty of Tordesillas, dividing up the New World's colonies between uh, Spain and Britain, I know, no, Spain and Portugal, of course, <clears throat> and Britain was still called England, Scotland, and Ireland back then. <clears throat> and Wales, of course, as well, although Wales already belonged uh, to England. The Portuguese crown claimed it had territorial rights in the area that John Cabot had visited in 1497 and 1498. John Cabot indeed uh, said in a passage quoted by Keith Kenneth MacNaught in his History of Canada that uh, there were so many fish there that sometimes they stayed, in other words, stopped his ships. <clears throat> Subsequently, in 1501 and 1502, the uh, Cortreal brothers Miguel and uh, Gaspar um, explored Newfoundland and Labrador, claiming them as part of the Portuguese Empire. Sometime before 1563, Basque fishermen, the Basques are a small ethnic group living partly in north, uh, northern Spain and partly in south uh, western France and speaking a so-called uh, language isolate with no known living relatives who had been fishing cod shoals off Newfoundland's coasts <clears throat> since the start of the 16th century, founded Plaisance, uh, today Placentia, a seasonal haven which French fisher, fishermen later also used. In 1583, Newfoundland became England's first possession in North America and one of the earliest permanent English colonies in the New World when Sir Humphrey Gilbert claimed it for Queen Elizabeth I. <clears throat> Explorers quickly realized that the waters around Newfoundland had North Atlantic's best fishing. By 1620, 300 fishing boats worked the Grand Banks, <clears throat> employing some 10,000 sailors. The Grand Banks are a group of underwater plateaus southeast of Newfoundland on the North American continental shelf. They are relatively shallow, ranging from 15 to 91 meters in depth. The cold Labrador current mixes with the warm waters of the Gulf Stream there, often causing extreme foggy conditions. And then, <clears throat> <coughs> Many continuing to come from the Basque country, Normandy or Brittany, Normandy and Bretagne in French. In 1655, France appointed a governor in Plaisance, the former Basque fishing settlement, thus starting a formal French colonization period in Newfoundland. English attacks on Placentia provoked retaliation by New France explorer Pierre Lemoine d'Iberville, who during King William's war in the 1690s destroyed nearly every English settlement on the island. <coughs> and in 
after the sie uh, siege of Port Royal in 1710, France lost the area's political control. The Mi'kmaq, or natives, local natives, a uh, tribe of them, engaged in warfare with the British throughout Drummer, Dummer's War, King George's War, a farther Le Loutre's War, and the French and Indian War, known in Europe as the Seven Years' War. So between 1722 and 1763, um, the first war having occurred from 1722 to 25, the second from 1744 to 48, <clears throat> the third from 1749 to 55, and the fourth from 1754 to 63. From 1763 to 1767, James Cook, a famous British explorer, made a detailed survey of the coasts of Newfoundland and southern Labrador by a commander of HMS Grenville. <clears throat> In 1854, the British government established Newfoundland's responsible government, <clears throat> which meant that it had uh, an elected legislature, of course, by uh, still during that time, <clears throat> only men owning property of at least a certain value could vote. <clears throat> and the government was responsible to that legislature. In 1855, Philip Francis Little, a native of Prince Edward Island, won a parliamentary majority. Little formed the first Newfoundland administration or uh, colony, colonial government from 1855 to 1858. In the 1869 general election, Newfoundland rejected confederation with Canada. However, uh, Sir John Thompson, one of Canada's briefest uh, serving prime ministers, came very close to negotiating in 1892, Newfoundland's entry into confederation. Newfoundland re remained a colony until it acquired a dominion status in 1907. <clears throat> and it had a relatively wide degree of self-government from the British rule. Newfoundland's own regiment, the first Newfoundland regiment, fought in the First World War. Due to Newfoundland's high debt load arising from the First World War and construction of the <clears throat> Newfoundland Railway and decreasing revenue due to the collapse of fish prices and probably also due to the uh, serious effects of the uh, Great Depression, this is my <clears throat> interpretation, the Dominion legislature decided to abolish itself in 1933 in exchange for loan guarantees by the Crown and a promise it would be re-established. In February 1934, the Commission of Government was sworn in. It consisted of seven people appointed by the British government. <clears throat> and incidentally, in uh, August 1941, the so-called Atlantic Conference was held on the coast of Newfoundland, whose uh, chief participants, of course, were the US President Franklin Roosevelt and the British Prime Minister Winston uh, Churchill. And its charter became the precursor to the United Nations Charter. It was held in Placentia Bay, Newfoundland. With World War II, because of the massive armaments that were needed and other war industries, Newfoundland became prosperous again. Agitation began to end the commission and reinstate responsible government. Instead, in 1946, the British government created the National Convention reflecting the efforts toward self-determination that arose in Europe after the Second World War. <clears throat> after all, after the Second World War, Britain and France decided to dismantle their colonial empires. <clears throat> the Netherlands, um, Portugal and Spain 
would also lose virtually all of their uh, colonial possessions in the decades from the 1940s to the <clears throat> 1970s. And Germany, of course, naturally had lost its colonies already after the uh, First World War. The convention chaired by Judge Cyril J. Fox <clears throat> consisted of 45 elected members from across the Dominion, and its formal task was to advise uh, what the the British Crown, apparently, or the Commission, what the political future of Newfoundland should be. Joseph Smallwood, a convention member who later served as a Newfoundland's first provincial premier or prime minister, made several motions to examine joining Canada by sending a delegation to Ottawa, Canada's capital. The first motion was defeated, although the convention later decided to send delegations to both London, the British capital, <clears throat> and Ottawa, the Canadian capital, to explore alternatives. <clears throat> In January 1948, the National Convention voted against putting Confederation onto the referendum 29 to 16, but the British, who controlled the National Convention and the subsequent referendum, overruled this vote. <clears throat> Those who supported a confederation were extremely disappointed with the recommendations of the National Convention and organized a petition that over 50,000 Newfoundlanders signed, demanding that confederation with Canada be placed before the people in the upcoming referendum. Most historians agree that the British government keenly wanted confederation on the ballot and ensured that it would be on the ballot. In 1947, an opinion survey found that 80% of Newfoundland residents wanted to join the United States. However, <clears throat> the Economic Union Party failed to gain much attention and merged with the Responsible Government League after the first referendum. They were held by Chesley, led by Chesley Crosby and Peter Cashin, respectively, or in that order. <clears throat> in June 1948, the first referendum was held, 44.6% or four-ninths of the people voted for responsible government. 41.1% or just over two-fifths voted for confederation with Canada. And 14.3% or about one-seventh voted for the commission of government. None of the choices gained over 50% and in July 1948, a second referendum <clears throat> squaring off responsible government and confederation with Canada was held. The official outcome <clears throat> of that referendum was 52.3% for confederation with Canada and 47.7% for responsible or independent government. After the referendum, the British government named a seven-man delegation to negotiate Canada's offer on Newfoundland's behalf. <clears throat> Six members of the delegation signed it, and the British government passed the British North America Act 1949. Newfoundland officially joined Canada at midnight on March the 31st, 1949. As documents in British and Canadian archives became available in the 1980s, it became clear that both Canada and Britain wanted Newfoundland to join Canada. Some have charged that it was a conspiracy to maneuver Newfoundland into confederation in exchange for forgiveness of Britain's war debt and for other considerations. Yet most historians who have examined the government documents have concluded that while Britain engineered the inclusion of a confederation option in the referendum, Newfoundlanders, albeit by a narrow margin, <clears throat> made the final decision themselves. I don't know if there could have been some manipulation of the vote, such as bribing certain voters that could have been so, because we have to remember that even in such an alleged bastion of democracy as the United States, before the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1965 Voting Rights Act, in most of the 
southern US states, the elections were not <clears throat> by and large free and fair. For one thing, one significant minority, ethno-racial minority, the African Americans, uh, was almost completely excluded from voting. And then <clears throat> for another, uh, there was at times intimidation and vote buying and vote fraud. As was exemplified <clears throat> by the Texas Democratic Senate primary in uh, 1948 that uh, Congressman Lyndon Johnson officially won by 87 votes, a result that probably was obtained by vote fraud. And then the 1960 U.S. presidential elections, where there was probably significant vote fraud, especially in Illinois and Texas, <clears throat> both of which the Democratic presidential candidate, Senator John Kennedy, narrowly won. So after the referendum, there was a rumor that the referendum had been narrowly won by the responsible government side, but that the British governor, governor had fixed the result. Shortly after the referendum, <clears throat> Herman William Quinton, one of only two commissioners who supported Confederation, ordered several boxes of ballots from St. John's to be burned. Some have argued that independent oversight of the vote tallying <clears throat> was lacking, although respected Corner Brook magistrate Nihimaya Short did supervise the process. He had also overseen elections to the National Convention. <clears throat> so how has Newfoundland's population developed since it joined Canada? In 1951, it was about 361,000. <clears> in 1961, 458,000. In 1971, 522,000. 1981, 568,000. Also in 1991. In 2001, 513,000, and now about 526,000. <clears throat> In the 2016 Canadian census, uh, St. John's, Newfoundland's capital, had 109,000 people. Um, Newfoundland is a strongly English speaking. Uh, province in Canada in 2011, 89% of the respondents indicated English as their native language, 10.4% um, chose French. <coughs> in the 2011 National Household Survey, 35.8% or over one third of Newfoundland's inhabitants <clears throat> declared themselves Roman Catholics. 25.1% <clears throat> belonged to the Anglican Church of Canada, 15.5% to the United Church of Canada, 6.5% to the Pentecostal churches. And then other Protestant denominations were much less common, only 6.8% uh, were belonged to non-Christian religions and then or no religions at all. 6.2% actually indicated no religious affiliation. The largest ethnic <clears throat> groups in the 2001 census were the English, Irish, uh, Scottish, uh, French and First Nations. For many years, Newfoundland and Labrador had experienced a depressed economy. <coughs> In the early 1990s, um, the cod fishery collapsed and the province uh, suffered record unemployment rates. The population decreased by about 60,000. Due to a major energy and resources boom, the provincial economy has had a ma major turnaround since the turn of the 21st century. Economic growth, gross domestic product, exports, and employment resumed in 2010. 
Service industries account for the largest share of the gross domestic product, especially financial services, healthcare, and public administration. <coughs> In 2008, <coughs> Newfoundland's per capita GDP was 61,763, higher than the national average and third only to Alberta and Saskatchewan out of the Canadian provinces. Mines in Labrador, the iron ore mine at Webush, Labrador City, and the nickel mine in uh, Boise's Bay, or Boise's Bay, produced a total of 3.3 billion Canadian dollars worth of ore in 2010. <coughs> Apart from seafood processing, paper manufacturing, oil refining, Manufacturing in the province consists of smaller industries producing food, brewing, and other beverage pr production. Agriculture in Newfoundland is limited to areas south of St. John's, <coughs> sorry, Cormac, Wooddale areas near Musgrave Town, and in the uh, Codroy Valley, or Codroy Valley. Potatoes, rutabagas, turnips, carrots, and cabbage are grown for local consumption. Poultry and eggs are also produced. Wild blueberries, partridge berries, or lingonberries, and baked apples or cloudberries are harvested commercially and used in jams and wine making. Newfoundland and Labrador have 40 provincial legislators or members of the House of Assembly, and they are elected to the, according to the British style single member plurality system. Um, general elections are normally held <clears throat> on the second Tuesday in October every four years. However, they may be called on the Premier's advice if the government loses a vote of confidence in the House of Assembly. <coughs> Traditionally, the Liberals and Progressive Conservatives have dominated Newfoundland, but in 2011, the New Democrats who had only ever attained minor success, had a major breakthrough and placed second in the popular vote behind the progressive conservatives. However, they uh, finished third in the actual seats. In the 2015 provincial elections, <clears throat> the liberals returned to power <coughs> with 31 seats, winning 57.2% of the vote, the progressive conservatives lost power, getting only 30.1% of the vote and seven seats. Uh, the New Democrats uh, lost half of their share of the vote, dropping to 12.1% of the vote and just two seats. The next provincial election is scheduled for June the 27th, 2019. And uh, according to the recent <clears throat> opinion polls, the Liberals are somewhat ahead of the Progressive Conservatives, with the New Democrats being um, a distant third. <clears throat> 